What's up guys, Kevin Cage back with another XRP update. I hope a lot of you enjoyed the free crypto tracker in yesterday's video as well as the previous one discussing high level the big picture. Funny enough, there's so many things occurring right now with XRP Ledger, specifically the privacy features of the central banks. And I didn't even have to mention Flare Networks. And I might not even have to mention in this video and keep in mind Flare Networks is arguably going to be one of the biggest things that will ever happen to the entire cryptocurrency space. You have to understand the potential demand for the Spark token flare the ticker flr i will be holding mine for life and i may even just be buying in bulk the ious i'm still considering it i've only bought very small amounts for now keep in mind on bitru and poloniex so in this video for those of you that think that crypto is not here to stay there's going to be ups and downs but you cannot put this genie back in the bottle the cryptocurrency global market cap is almost two trillion dollars keep in mind this is still smaller than the entire company of apple i believe in terms of market capitalization so yes i believe the upside is tremendous when you have people like Glenn Hutchins and Digital Currency Group, these huge organizations that are essentially stewards and leaders in this entire space, and they invested into Coinbase and Ripple from the get-go. So just remember whose game it really is. All right, so we see Tether is on the rise. We see XRP at 56 cents, almost 57 cents. It's time will come. We are seeing assets that are doing 10x, 20x in this bullish cycle. If you um, came here this far, stick to the research, decide for yourselves. You have my sympathy if you sell, but I've seen too much. I am not going anywhere. I'm going to hold throughout this storm. So a few big things that we're going to read a very interesting thread right here. So we have SBI, SMBC, and MUFG invest in a digital currency firm for $62 million in funding. This is a big deal, and this is catching the eyes of many groups, just like that 10-figure investment sum in groups like SDX and SIX, the Swiss Digital Exchange. Notice... Among these 10 investors, we have Sumitomo Mitsui Banking, okay, and we have obvious ties. We have SBI Holdings, a huge shareholder of Ripple and R3, which is even bigger. And then MUFG, RippleNet Partner, longtime RippleNet Partner. Also, Japan's biggest bank. Once again, no big deal. Okay, now we also have 72 million XRP on the move, Bitstamp, Binance, even other exchanges. We've seen Coinbase and many others. So a lot of us are anticipating the potential relisting of XRP in the future. Um, some people think that's very silly. I see it as being very, very possible. Um, on and on and on, we are seeing the SEC making the making themselves look like a fool and i'm just grateful for all of these attorneys in the space that are providing um essentially their insight on this matter jeremy hogan jesse turner john deaton all of you power players anybody that i've forgotten i really appreciate you as well so yes i think we're anticipating this we also know that brad garlinghouse ceo of ripple will be having an interview with thinking crypto on youtube his name is tony next month and yes, maybe this is over speculation, but I'm just going to assume that XRP may have a nice little price move before that point. Will it be up or down? The question is yours. Overall, you have to focus long term in this game. Okay. Now, also just to point out everybody's favorite character, Jay Clayton, the former SEC chairman, notice behind the Ripple lawsuit, of course, because he kind of threw it on the table before he left. I think it's a very interesting political play. Whatever your belief is, you understand that this is a lot more than just uh more than just XRP the technology. So notice he was actually just hired by a crypto hedge fund that holds Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, you know, I hold Ethereum. I love Ethereum. I think it has some high potential upside in the future. You can't ignore it. Um, but overall, you have to understand there are massive games of politics in the space. Um, we're never going to buy the bottom, the exact bottom. We're never going to sell the exact top of every investment. What we can do as investors, traders, whatever you are, is capitalize on what happens in between. Okay, so we are grateful for that volatility. Next up, we have XRP Quantum Leap. Thank you, sir, for sharing this with me the other day. So we have real Sologenic guys. I'm, I know we're familiar with them. We talked about them, um, I believe, last spring, maybe May. And notice, we're announcing the launch date of the Sologenic DEX, DEX, Decentralized Exchange, on Monday, March 29th, Real Sologenic. So I know this has been talking or been talked about a lot. And overall, this is all built on the XRP ledger. So this was announced yesterday, believe it or not. And fully customizable trading, terminal widgets, professional charting tools with one-minute candles. I will not be using the one-minute candle. And live order books and very low fees. So I wish this well. Um, I have not done a deep dive into Solo. I've been watching the price steadily climb. Um, for an asset, though, I just want more uh, volume in the asset to ensure that I have proper liquidity to get in and out as a trader or even a potential investor. So I have to look more into this, but I do wish them well. And I, I don't know if his last name is uh, Ross or uh, Ras, because I don't want to just say Bob, uh, Bob Ross if that's not his actual last name, but he's the CEO at Coinfield. I wish this project well. I just have to you know do my due diligence on this asset. So 
Now, also, we do recall back in May 2020, RippleNet announced, of course, RippleNet Cloud. We know also that well over 50% of all of their users are now leveraging the cloud. And of course, with the you know pandemic, the C-word accelerating digitization, there's just a few things I wanted to read right here. RippleNet Cloud, and this is part of the game, I think, with this whole SEC lawsuit as well. RippleNet Cloud also makes it easy for financial institutions to add alternative settlements through on-demand liquidity, aka XRP. Cloud customers can also maintain and make new connections more easily through one single API for all of their RippleNet connections. And when I hear all of this, um, you know, new connections, I'm also thinking of the capabilities that we oftentimes overlook, such as multi-hop. And where were they leveraging that? Throughout Southeast Asia, where are they building new corridors for on-demand liquidity to leverage XRP even now that they're announcing today? Southeast Asia, APEC region, Brazil, um, expanding through Africa, all these other projects as well, even Cardano. It's beyond interesting, guys. We have to cut this tribalism and understand that this technology is going to change the game. The cross-border market, cross like literally cross-border sent globally, even Ripple is quoted to say, $155 trillion. Do you really think it's only going to be one asset? I do not. I think it's going to be a combination of these assets. There's so much friction. There's so many issues today that I think Algo, QNT, HBAR, ADA, VET, whatever asset, XLM, you name it, can all actually work together and interoperate. And yes, there's going to be competition, which is good, but there's also going to be cooperation to some degree. Okay, so we're going to keep going and all these users are going to have their own preferences. Um, I just, you know, every single day, oh, this asset is better. Why? Because it went up 20% and the other one didn't? You're ignoring the tech. You're ignoring the ability of network effects. There's so many other factors. You're ignoring the uh, the token economics, the tokenomics as well, the distribution schedule. There's just so many other factors. It's a combination of fundamentals, of technical analysis, you know, understanding economics. It's uh, beyond exciting. And I'm so happy I got into this space. Also, and this is what we've been betting for a long time. This is not just me. This is everybody. I think it's rather logical to think. SOC 2 certification, and this is what Ripple got. This is an industry standard, this compliance and certification in this space, because yes, they're working with the top 50, 50 central banks. Uh, yes, it will matter. Why do you think they're dropping it? Why do you think Ripple's actually retweeting their own information? Because they're hinting it, guys. Words mean things. Um, you know, you can call that a conspiracy theorist, but let's see what happens in the future. So I think XRP has a massive chance to get definitive clarity, meaning specific guidelines of what they can and cannot do in the U.S. before the majority of the assets. Then that glass ceiling of price that has been suppressed for so long will finally be smashed through because then users... That big banks can finally use on-demand liquidity and leverage XRP as that bridge asset in those chosen corridors, which are also bi-directional. We understand how many currencies are on the XRP L as well that are issued. We're, what, 5,400, 5,400 currencies? Over 5,000. And also, if you're a mathematician, you're familiar with how combinations work. And that quickly becomes thousands and thousands and thousands of potential pairs. So... Yes, as we know, with, of course, supply and demand, what happens with a finite supply that is ever shrinking, some are being held, some are being leveraged, even XRP that's minted into F assets on Flare networks, and then Spark is collateralized for now at a 2.5 ratio, do you understand the multiplier effects of holding that? when exchanges are holding XRP for the long term, when they're in different trusts, when even SBI is giving away to shareholders and distributing? I just... You know, it's, it's just unbelievable, and I hope people understand the opportunity at hand. Nothing is guaranteed, but my passion, my interest is 100% sincere and serious about this matter. Okay, also, the future of CBDCs, now we're going to kind of speed through this. Um, actually, I might go into the next video because this is getting uh, crazy. I'm just beyond excited. Let's actually just do a shout out really quick to FTSO.eu. I um, highly recommend checking this out. So in this video, we're going to show you and they're going to show you the Flare Network's validator node and enjoy something special about the signal provider. Now, you guys can do your own research about different FTSO signal providers. And the cool thing is we can actually delegate our assets and delegate our vote and earn rewards or earn a passive income in the future yes flare networks is not launched yet it will be launched hopefully what end of may end of june we're going to be keeping a, keeping an eye on that and getting a small portion of our spark tokens distributed to us initially and then over the next what two to three years they're going to slowly roll it out i'm telling you right now um if you guys want to sell your spark tokens that's all good and great i you know that whatever what you do is up to you but i am making the choice 
not to sell a single spark i'm making the choice to leverage that in my xrp holdings for as much passive income early on right away to take advantage of this market because this is only happening once and us xrp holders that properly claimed our xrp suffered for several years of just holding when the price is just coiling up we're getting those spark tokens for free and the concept to even i mean even at the iou value right now is astounding we had a one-to-one -one ratio. If you had 100,000 XRP, you're going to get 100,000 Spark. Now, what happens, and this, maybe this is Moonboyish for you, but you don't understand the what this technology could aim to displace. I've just witnessed assets do a 20x in six months. So please don't tell me it's impossible. Could Spark go from $1 to $10? Could it go to $100 in the years ahead? The answer is yes. Now, could it not? Yes, as well. But that potential right there is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. And in the investment space, in the trading space, life is about taking calculated risks. In the future, people are going to call us lucky. Oh, it must be nice. You got into crypto. I knew some people were bef like here before me in 2016. That was when I was just attempting to trade Forex. I'm happy I got in. Even if I thought I got in late, there's people that are coming in now. And let me tell you this right now. There's people that are way smarter than me in this space. But you getting in now, even last year, are early, are early, are early, are early. We've been just coiling up for quite some time in the space. I'm um, people that diversified properly have been, you know, making good returns, but I am not. I am not getting rid of my XRP right before we are on the precipice of clarity. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the push notification so you're updated when I upload, and I will catch you in the next one.